Hi everyone, welcome to the National Gallery Singapore. I'm Chandran, I'm the founder and director of Act 3 Theatrix and a storyteller and story writer. You know, have you ever imagined what it's like to be a statue, frozen still? Hey, shall we try that? Shall we all be statues? Everybody, up on your feet! Up, 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 okay. Let's be, ah, I know, chopstick. Chopstick is very stiff and straight. Okay. Chopstick! Broken chopstick. Really broken chopstick. Really, really broken chopstick. Maybe you want to hold your breath too. Chopstick! Broken chopstick. Really broken chopstick. Really, really broken chopstick. Chopstick! Broken chopstick. Really broken chopstick. Really, really broken chopstick. You know, it's tiring to be a statue, right? I'd rather be alive like this. Okay, settle down everyone, settle down. Good job. Now, taking a deep breath. And out, in, and out. You know, I feel so good to be here because the National Gallery Singapore is like a treasure cave filled with precious paintings and artwork. One such artwork is just behind me. This is the portrait of a king. King Nangkalao. And this is the work of a Thai artist, Pra Sora Lakhit. From 1824 to 1851, King Nangkalao ruled Thailand, which was then known as Siam. When King Nangkalao passed on, a golden sculpture of the king was first made based on accounts from those who knew what the king looked like. This sculpture was then used as a reference for a portrait to be made, and that portrait was then referred to by Pra Sora Laklikit when he painted this oil painting. And uh, this portrait reminds me of a story. This story comes from even, uh, even further back in time. It's a Greek mythology, uh, more than 3,000 years old. So today I want to share with you this story titled King Midas. Once upon a time, in ancient Greece, there lived a king. King Midas. No, he, he liked three things above all else. He loved his young daughter. Number two, he liked or loved the flower rose. And the third thing he loved was gold. To him, the best thing above anything else was to see his young daughter plucking rose flowers from the garden, placing them in gold vases that were laid all around the palace. And his rose garden was like a refuge or a place he went to when he had problems or when he wanted to think about things. So one evening, while King Midas was walking in his rose garden, he came across an elf. This elf was lying down on the ground. He was weak, he was ill. Being a kind-hearted person, King Midas lifted up the elf, brought him into the palace, and ordered his servants to give the elf food, to, to wash up the elf, and also give him a good bid so that he could rest. And surprisingly, the next morning, when everyone saw the elf, they were surprised because he was full of life. He was, he was so cheerful and he could dance and, and laugh. And the elf looked at the king with a smiling face and told him, Dear king, you are a kind man. So I will grant you a wish. Ask for anything. King Midas thought, well, he had his daughter, he had a rose garden, which everyone said was the best in the entire world. And he had gold. Wait a minute. Maybe he was thinking more gold would be good. Well, he was a little greedy. So he looked at the elf and the king said, Well, if you ask me, I wish for this that everything I touch would turn 
into gold. Poof! Vanished the elf. Well, the king didn't really think much of it. <laughs> he thought, well, this can't be true. So he went to a nearby chair, and when King Midas sat on the chair, the chair turned to gold. Uh, seeing that, he almost fell out. Oh. So he thought, maybe this is just one. So there was a table nearby, and the king reached out and touched the table. And you know what? The entire table turned into solid gold. Ooh. And on the table was an apple. <laughs> an apple just like this, an ordinary apple. So the king thought, well, let's see. So he reached out and he touched the apple. And what do you think happened? <gasps> the apple turned to gold. He, he realized he really had this power. So he went around the palace touching everything, the, 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 the pillars, you know, everything he touched and everything turned to gold. He was so happy that he ordered his cooks to prepare a lavish meal in celebration. The cooks were wondering, eh? what's wrong with our king? Well, they didn't argue and they prepared this meal. And that was when his troubles started. So there he said, ha he was really hungry, so they laid the food right in front of him. He picked up the first spoonful and he put it to his mouth. And poof! And the moment the food touched his lips, it turned to gold and fell down onto the table with a loud clang, 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 clang. <laughs> he picked up a piece of meat. It turned to gold and he almost broke his teeth trying to bite into it. Ow! And he reached out for a glass of water and that too turned into gold. Just imagine that. Everything was turning into gold, but the king was worried. He was thinking, oh, if I can't eat, I'm going to starve. And if I starve, I'll be in real trouble. So whenever the king was worried, he would take a walk in his rose garden. And so that is where he went. And as luck would have it, right there in the rose garden was his dearest daughter plucking rose flowers. The moment she saw the king, she was so happy. She loved her father very much. So she ran up to him and the little princess hugged the king. And what do you think happened? She turned into a golden statue. <gasps> Stiff and lifeless. When the king saw this, he was shocked. He tried to shake her, he wanted to revive her, but it was no use. Let me ask you, do you think the princess should remain a golden statue so that the king will learn a lesson? What do you think? Hmm. Well, tears welled up in his eyes and slowly the tears rolled down his cheek and fell on the rose flowers there. And all the rose garden, everything in the rose garden turned gold. But the king didn't care because at that moment he didn't care about roses, he didn't care about gold. All he cared for was his dearest daughter, who was now a golden statue, still and lifeless. And looking at that, tears really flowed down his cheeks and landed on the ground. And you know, coincidentally, this was the very place where the elf had been lying down the day before. And when the tears hit the ground, poof! The elf appeared and he looked at the king. Dear king, why are you so sad? Well, the king had no words. He was just looking at his daughter. What can I do for you? 
Oh, dear elf, now I have just one wish. Please, please, take the power that you gave me. Take it back. I don't want it anymore. I don't want my touch to be golden. Please, please, take it back. Hmm. The elf turned and looked at all of you. Now, how many of you think the elf should take back the power? Put up your hands. Who says he should just leave the princess as a statue? Well, you appreciate a good man, that's right. So the elf said, You know, king, you have ruled your kingdom wisely. You have done so much good for all the people. You are a person with a heart of gold. Huh. Not gold as in real gold, but a heart of kindness. Maybe a little greedy. So, with that, poof, said the elf, and the elf vanished. And right in front of the king stood not a golden statue of a princess, but his daughter now alive, a little confused, wondering what had happened. And again, she hugged her father, but this time, no magic. She remained a little child. The king was very happy, and that day he learned a lesson. And from that day on, he continued to rule his people wisely and with all the kindness he could give. And they all were very, very happy. And everything in the palace turned back to its original form. The end. Hey, okay, let me ask you this. Now, if you were granted the wish, how many of you would ask for this power that whatever you touch would turn into gold? Anybody? So remember, think carefully before you make a wish. Things may go wrong. Well, so that's the story that came to my mind looking at King Nangkalao. You know, paintings like this, I mean, you just imagine the artist doing all little, little details. See all the details there? Because I've spent so much time and effort and imagination to do this. So, you know, hopefully you get an opportunity to come to the National Gallery Singapore or to a place where lots of paintings and artwork. So what you can do is to spend time, look at the artwork very carefully and see if any story comes up to your mind or if you can create your own story and maybe you can share that story with your family members, your friends, and maybe, you know, come to a big stage one day and present it to thousands and thousands of people. Stories in art. I'm Chandran from Act 3 Theatrix, signing off from National Gallery, Singapore. Oh.